have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
welcome to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Wazoni. We are so grateful that you took time out of your schedule to listen in on today. Did you know this is a day that you've never seen before? We could have dreamed about it. We could have said this is something that we sent and felt some way. But listen, before the eons of time, God saw fit for you to be born, for you to live, and for you to experience this day. For that, we give him glory, we give him honor, we give him praise for what he's done and what he's about to do. Well, listen, if this is your first time listening to the Just For You podcast, we want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We send a shout out to our very own CEO and visionary, Dr. Kimmy Robinson, and our Lation family. We welcome you, every listener listening in on today, whether it's your first time, many times, we say welcome to you, and I want to say a welcome to my husband, Pastor Donald Wright Jr., who supports us as well. God bless you all. Well, with that being said, for those that this is your first time listening in, I'd love to share with you what the Just For You podcast is all about. You know, God has been so good, and I just want to testify for a moment. Today, we're going to be talking about the power to choose, but I want to share with you something. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should be grateful about it. I know we say it, we hear it, we thank God for it, but at the end of the day, to know our God reigns, that he loves us, that he cares, that he's so in love with us, is a mighty, mighty blessing. Let me share what the Just For You podcast is all about. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally, utilizing biblical principles. Just For You will reveal truths embedded in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living, soul winning, compassion, and strategies to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. Just For You will allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire, and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, community, and marketplace. That is what Just For You is all about. As we said, we're going to be studying today uh, on the power. Our topic is the power to choose. The power choose. Do you know how important it is for you to have a choice about something? Listen, we take sometimes our choices for granted. This amazes me every single week when God wants to speak a word that it is relevatory to our lives. He cares so much about each and every one of us that he has created a way for us to be able to hear his voice through his word. Amen. So before we begin, we want to pray. We want to ask God to come in, to have his way, to do what he wants to do. We are his vessels. We want to be used by him. We want him to speak through us, and we want him to get all of the glory. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you come into this podcast have your divine will and way. We submit ourselves to you for you to be glorified, lifted up, and, Lord, that you may have your divine will and way. We ask that you forgive us all of our sins, and we forgive others that we may be forgiven. Father, would you just have your way through this word? This is a powerful word that will help and in, in part in us and to help us to live 
for our practical lives when we're in the church and out of the church. Would you help us to grasp this word, hold on to this word, that it becomes life to us? And, God, we will give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. Bless every listener listening in and their families. Help provide for whatever it is they need. Open up their understandings and hearts and ears to hear, oh God. And we will thank you for depositing this word in our lives that you may be glorified. We ask that you have your divine will and way again, that you, hallelujah, will give us what we need through this word, and we will honor you and praise you forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, as we've been talking about, we're going to be talking about the power to choose. I don't know about you, but there are times in our lives when we are kids, we have the power to choose. Have you ever played kickball and there were two teams and you had to be chosen for a team? Listen, that can work in our favor or it can work against us. And the reason why this is so important is because when we are choosing or when we are accepting a choice, it depends on what the elements are. You got to catch me on that. So when someone would pick you, to be on a team. It, now, let's be real. If it wasn't the team you wanted to be on, you'd feel some kind of way. But I want to say today, it's working for your good. It may not have been understanding then when you didn't get picked for the team you wanted to be on, but the team that you were supposed to be on, if you got in there and you guys worked together, you may have won the game. So what I want to say is, in our Christian life as believers, we have a choice. We have a choice to follow God or a choice to follow Satan. Depending on what choice you make will be the outcomes that you receive. But in this choosing, you must choose wisely. That means, and I know that we talk about this, making an informed decision. That means having all the elements you need to make the decision. When we choose Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we know who he is, we know what he's done, we know what he will do. If you choose the enemy, you should know who he is, you should know what he's done, you should know what he will do. So on today, I want you to be very cautious in making decisions and choose wisely. This is the word that the Lord is going to give us some substance with that we can look at and understand his way of thinking for all of our life decisions. Will you journey with me through the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter, and we're going to read it as such. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summons the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. This is the New International Version, okay? Joshua, verse 2, said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Sirach, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. Catch that. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. Let me stop right there. I need you to understand there are going to be times you're not going to be like your grandmother, your mama, your daddy, your aunt, your uncle. God has a way of delivering his people from a thing that is not good for them and give them what it is needed for them to stay many generations before. Why? Because we all have a choice. 
we all have a choice for. And to Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau. But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there and brought you out. And I brought your people out of Egypt. You came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horses as far as the Red Sea. But they cried, hallelujah, to the Lord for help. And he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them, you saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Listen, God is reminding you, I brought you out. I need someone to catch me. I am taking you from this place to that place that we can understand his measure of love and the assignment that he's giving us all. As believers, each and every one of us has an assignment. It isn't the place you're in, it's the assignment. It isn't what you want to do, it's the assignment. The assignment to lose whatever it is God has spoken to you for your life. He is very intuitive as to what you need, how you need it. And he had to remind the Israel. He had to remind the people. This is what I've done. Verse 8, I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you. And you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balak, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam. So he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Are you all hearing the measure of love that God has for his people? Eleven, then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, my God today, and which drove them out from before you. Also the two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword and bow. You a land, Lord, have mercy, on which you did not toil, and city you did not build. And you live in them and eat from vine yards and olive groves that you did not plant. Stop right there, please. Did you hear, not only did he give victory when people were after his people, but he gave them in each occurrence land. Lord, have mercy. Land, he gave them. Victory, he gave them. Power. He gave them. And yet, there were times they didn't even have to fight. This just said they didn't accomplish the uh, victory with their own hand or sword. There are times in our life where we never have to fight this battle. We get to watch our God stand up on our behalf when we believe in him. We get to say he is our God. We get to say he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We get to proclaim to the world that we trust him no 
matter what. When we trust him, he gives us victory. He never said it would be easy. He never said it would be something that we wouldn't have to go through. But he did say he would be with us. Not some of the time, but always. Not with the next song. God is always inclusive. He said always, even until the end of the world. 14, now fear the Lord. And serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites and whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Then the people answered Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from the land, that land of slavery, and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey, and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, not some of them. The word of God says all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We, too, will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sin. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign God, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. In other words, this is a warning. While folks are chasing after crystals, I'm going to say a burning sage. While they're following things that are not connected to the God we serve, because the word of God made it very clear in the biblical days what was done. In these days when Jesus came, there was a new world. There was an acceptance of us for our sins. There was a new life we lived. The Bible says, just like their ancestors, that when we receive Christ, we become a new creature. We follow his example. We adhere to the word of God. Who am I talking to? We follow his ways. We don't take half from the world and then come back over here and, and oh, glory to God. Because then who are you really serving? It's called the power to choose. Who are you really serving? Because you don't want any residue of the world. You want to be like these Israelites. See, I'm a firm believer. Some people argue, why did it take them 40 years to go through the wilderness? Why did it take? Because God knew what they could not handle. See, they had bumped their heads over and over, just like us, until we come into the knowledge of God, until we follow him completely. Because when you are saved, when you say, Lord, I choose you, you do your very best to get to know him. You don't want to be out here like some folk that think they're going to fool God. They think, I'll give my life to the Lord, but I'll live this kind of way. Then God is watching all of it. You're not escaping him. You're not fooling him. You're not. He sees the heart of man. So he says, I'm going to do a little reminder here. I'm going to 
do a little check so that you remind yourself oh, that I am God. I'm going to show that I am God. And he does it for us never to forget. Do you know there are times in this world, look around. People are confused. They believe one thing here and one thing there, and they mesh them all together, and they believe this God. Is that what your Bible says? Joshua 24 prepares us for the living exclusively unto our Lord and Savior. It prepares us to govern our minds and our hearts. As believers, we are all faced with choices every day. Doesn't mean you're going to always get them right, but you certainly don't want to get them wrong and continually act as though you didn't know the right way to go. Why? Because time is fleeting. 19, Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. 20, if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign God, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, not we. No, no, no. We will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. You are witnesses. You are chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they reply. Listen, be careful. Making a statement you know you're not sure of. Because in this case, when you say, after the man of God is there, you are witnesses, and you reply, yes, we are witnesses, you are accountable. You are accountable. So when you say that you're going to do this or do that, and God is looking at the heart of man, he's looking at, are you considering me first, or are you doing it in and of yourself? He's considering and looking at the heart. Amen? Now then, said Joshua, throw away. So you got to have some kind of crown. You're really following him. Throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. Now I'm going to make it clear so you don't have any questions, no things about who you thought you were serving the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people. And there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decree and law. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. I want to stop right there. You have been given a choice to serve God or serve the enemy. Serving God comes responsibility to follow his will and his way. It comes with praise. You should pray before every decision. You should pray about what he wants, not what you want. You should pray that his perfect will be done in your life. 
He knows the path that he has for us. He will make clear the decision with a word and with his guidance. He will never leave you or forsake you. And here's the safety net. Even if we were to make a wrong decision or I really thought it was right, because he will never leave us or forsake us, he will help us. You want to be glad it's not in the, like the book of Joshua, where that sin could not have been forgiven because of the stand that they took before the Lord. When blood was shed at Calvary's cross, we had a way to eternal life. That does not give us a free reign to go out here and do everything and anything that we desire and come back to God and say, well, you created it. I know and it heard, and especially young people who say this, well, if marijuana was so bad, why would God create it? Because it was good. It was used as a healing model. But when we abuse anything, then it no longer becomes out of the purpose it was created. It is distressed and it is uh, perplexed. And now we want to use this psychology on God. It's a warning. Be careful, careful with things that you already know are not God. How do we know? You should be convicted. You should be convicted with anything that is not right. When it's right, there is peace in the spirit. If it is something God is going to give us strength to pursue, he's going to give us peace, even if it's a hard decision. My husband and I had to make some hard decisions. And believe me, I wasn't always feeling like, oh, I got God. Let me put a word on it. I always had a word on it. But if we can be real in this human flesh, we sometimes can feel like, okay, like Abraham. I heard you say, Larry, my kinfolk. Hey, but can you tell me where we're going? No, I'll just leave you. Keep going. Wait a minute. You know, I mean, I know I'm supposed to go to the left. All right, come on, God. Give me a little bit more insight. Have you ever felt like that? Because I have. Where you say, Lord, I know that you said A, B, C, and D, but I really need a little bit more insight if you could. He said that, and it shall be given. So we get in a place where we don't want to ask sometimes because we don't feel he will answer. Tell you, trust him, believe him. Don't tamper with other gods. Don't tamper with things you already know, it's something wrong with you. Because we're living in a time where it seems like everybody has a message. And it sounds real godly. I want you to pay attention. Don't let your ears be simple about stuff that sounds good but doesn't match the word of God. Don't let you be fooled singing like, oh, this is really good. But perhaps there's something that's not good of us. That's our relationships. That's our jobs. That's our family members. That's, listen, and I said family. That's um, other things that will affect our lives. Recently, the Lord put me on a shutdown, an abrupt shutdown. It was no action to go just do this. And when God does that, Sometimes you feel like, okay, God, what's going on? God, it's not my place to what's going on. My first thing is to follow him and to listen to what he wants to say because when he talks to us in those times, these are very important, inclusive instructions. And if you get it wrong or do it your way, you're going to mess up what God is preparing. So he's saying, I need you to shut down, let me talk to you, and then you'll know what to do. I said, okay, God. Now, in my heart, my husband and I have been praying. And there was a heavy burden on us as to why we were praying. Every week he was saying, I need you to talk and remind people about giving their lives to the Lord, about living a certain way. 
about giving this word or that word. And I'm like, okay. But at the end of the day, everything God does is strategic. It was strategic for them to have had parents that followed other gods so he could bring them into a land of plenty, that he could deliver them and show them what his will was about. So he can allow them to understand the difference of living a holy life, living good, living like he asked, versus them living any old kind of way. Find yourself, when you look in the atmosphere of where you are, or perhaps where you may be out in the uh, uh, area shopping, or just stop a moment and look around. Can we honestly say we can see what Joshua was trying to tell the people that they would be right with God? Can you see it when you go shopping? Can you see it when you're even in a church? Can you see when people are around that they have a choice to make? This is important vital information because our choosing as believers should be for God. He wants us to love him more than we love anybody else. I often say I love my husband, but I'll never love him more than God. Because God is the sustainer of my life. God is the one who gives me my faculties of my mind and the help and the strength that he is the one that will lead and guide me. And he's gracious enough to have afforded me a husband. That isn't to overtrump him. It is to love my husband with respect and love him as my head and understand his role in my life. If I ever were to veer off, and love him in a way that's not pleasing to God, that I would put him over my husband, then God would not be pleased. Then we wonder why things fall apart. Then we wonder why things don't come into the place it needs to be. There's a quick fix to that. Choose wisely. In every area of our lives, Oh, I know it's a dollar bill, but the choice of how I spend it or save it has everything to do with the outcome of my life. The choice to be saved has everything to do with if I'll have an eternal home or if I will not have a place of eternity. How I choose in this life will be the outcome of what I chose. See, I'm a firm believer. You don't have to get up to say a lot of flowery words about people. If they're living it, it's going to be seen. And when you honor them, it can be true. But listen to me. Isn't it more honorable to God to live it than to say it? Cautions us to choose wisely. He cautions us to make wise decisions in every environment we're in, that he can be glorified. What glorifies God's soul? What glorifies God's peace? What glorifies God's joy? What glorifies God? Those that are born to make his name famous. Now listen, you don't need a preacher's license to do that. You can always talk about the goodness of the Lord. And when you're called to serve in those capacities, then we must align with the will and the work of the Lord that he can be glorified. Our generation needs to know the truth. They cannot be um, taught it's okay. They'll grow out of now because maybe tomorrow may never go. Wouldn't you feel better if you were able to help somebody before they were in dire straits so they would be able to make an informed decision? 
On today, it is our prayer that you can look at the scripture, Joshua 1 through 28, and make an informed decision for whatever you need the Lord's guidance for. You can make the decision because you have the power to choose. You have the ability. And you shall have what you say when it lines up with the will and the work of the Lord. Trust him. Stand on his word. But make the choice like Joshua said. As for me and my house, we, not our one thing, we will serve the Lord. What does that look like? Whoever is in your family, under your roof, as you believe, they're believing with you. Children are believing with parents. Husband and wife are believing together. Siblings are believing together, whether it's grandparents, aunts, and uncles, whoever your household involves is believing together. So I encourage you to stand strong, firm, with joy to choose. Because some people don't have a choice in some matters. Sometimes their rights are taken. They're in prison. And choices will get made for you when you don't choose wisely. But you know what? Even in that, God is still a believer. So those that cry out sincerely for him and choose him as Lord. See, he knows all of our pain. Aren't you glad when you come to him and you learn of him and you give him your life sincerely that he will never leave you or forsake you? He's right there with you. I want to encourage you today to take the challenge. The challenge is this. Look in your family, look on your job, make a decision in your school, in the marketplace, wherever you are, to make his name famous. Does that mean you got to take your Bible, slap it down, and wear your cross, and swirl it around your neck, and take your cell phone to the next place, and whoo, God is this, and, you know, do what he tells you to do. The best way to make his name famous is to live a life that someone will want to know who your God is. That means if something isn't right and he says you've got to speak up as uncomfortable as it may be. Anybody ever been in the lunchroom and you know you're saved and here comes somebody with drama, gossip, Cousin or something that's unethical, and you say absolutely not. They do it each and every day. You're subjected to it, and this and the other. Sometimes you may have to get yourself up if you don't feel led to say anything, and just walk to another section of the lunchroom that you can't hear it, be involved in it. That you're making his name famous by you not partaking. And something that will allow someone to believe differently. You have to make a difference. So I want to encourage you to do that. In our family, wherever we may be, to make sure our light so shine that others may see our good work and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. I want to encourage you to stand strong and firm and believe in for what he's promised you because God never fails. He had promises 
and a covenant in place that he knew if they served him that those things he promised him will come to pass. I'm here to tell you everything you've been standing on, believing God, he's here to deliver his promises. He's not going to tell you he's going to bless you and give you land and tell you he's going to give you this or give you that and never fulfill his promises and you faithfully serve him. He's not that kind of God. I've never known him to be an Indian giver. I know maybe you went after something and you didn't get it or something you prayed for didn't work out the way. Maybe it wasn't time. I promise you, when the appointed time comes, there's no demon in him that can stop what God will have in motion. So choose wisely. Choose according to God leading and guiding for your life. No weapon for against you shall cross. Seeing like the Israel and those that Joshua had to lead. True victory can't come unless you meditate day and night. We are to take in God when we wake up in the morning and remember him before we go to bed at night. We are to pray, stay in communion with him, that he can lead us and guide us into all truth. And if we make that, just as in the book of Joshua, the first chapter, we will see the difference in being able to live this way and then finding out his way. This way and his way. And his way will always yield his promises and his covenant. I pray this word has been inspirational, has helped you, will help you to make good decisions, to choose wisely. This is how much God loves us, that whatever it is we need, he's always on board to give us exactly what we need, that he can be glorified. Thank you for this opportunity to share this word with you. I pray that you will take the challenge and look at your family, look at your close friends. There's so much going on out here in the world, and we need to let our light so shine that others can glorify him, glorify the Lord that the kingdom can be in law. Hey, did you know you can be a kingdom builder? Yes, you can. By the way you live, the words you live by, being available to God and allowing him to change your life and help you to be all he created you to be. Someone will pay attention. Someone will remember there's something about life it outshines darkness. He even put darkness between them. You all remember when Pharaoh was after the Israel. You remember how Moses had released them and Joshua? You remember they had to be led across the sea. He said he put darkness between them. Let the water overtake them and still brought them into a land of milk and honey. May God bless you with your land of milk and honey and peace and joy that you can make his name famous. Thank you for listening to this week's exhortation, The Power to Choose. Now, listen, let's switch gears. If this is your birthday month, we celebrate you. You had a new baby, got a new job. Maybe there's something else you're doing, stepping out on faith for a vision and a dream. God has given you. We want you to know here and just for you and Elation Radio, we celebrate you. We want you to know maybe there's been something on the other aspect. I want to say celebratory congratulations 
to all, first of all, congratulate and say happy birthday to my dear sister in the Lord, Pastor Charlene Wheeler Williams. God bless you on your birthday. Our own sister, Dr. Marty K. Casey, God bless you on your birthday this month and many others that are having birthdays or have had birthdays. God bless you. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, perhaps you've gone through something with family, a loved one, maybe there's been a death, maybe there's an affliction, maybe something else is going on. We want to send a a prayer out to each and every one of you and let you know that we are praying for you. At this moment, we want to definitely lift up Regina King and the passing of her son, Ian. Would you please remember to pray for her? Not just because she's from Hollywood, but let's pray for God to heal her during this harsh time in her life. I want you to also be praying for all families experiencing grief, experiencing death, experiencing loved ones going through. We send love out to our family and the recent passing of a loved one. Please, please, by all means. Make sure we continue to pray because we never know what may happen. I like to also pray for everything that is going on around us. Pray for your neighbors. I'm lifting my neighbors up all the time. I don't just live in my neighborhood. You better believe if something happened on the block, they're calling me and my husband. Why? Because we want an invested stake in the lives of those around us. We don't just want to be here. So please keep that in mind. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your church family. Pray. This is praying time that people choose why. Choose him because it is needful. For them to do. I want to share some announcements with you. Uh, I'm super excited for all the things that are going on in our lives. I want to share with you that there is an event on tonight. It's that time for ladies. It's called It's Time to Shatter the Enemy. It's Time to Shatter the Enemy. And this is with our dear sister, Prophet Mar- Maretta, Marietta Flowers. I don't want to get it wrong. Marietta Flowers. It will be a Zoom meeting tonight at, C- at Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. And you can contact the page of Robert Apostle Robert Flowers for more information. That's Robert Flowers for more information. This is an event that is open to, I'm sure, women, but please, the speaker is Prophetess Marletta Flowers. Thank you for seeing that a little bigger, Marletta Flowers. Amen. Then we want to congratulate her husband, also, who recently wrote a book, and this book is for the body of Christ on evangelism. Uh, evangelism presence. You can contact this page for more information. Again, that is for Robert Flowers, so that you can contact them for more information. Well, I also want to share with you that we have, of course, other information coming up. I'm excited about another event that will be coming up in the month of February. It is with the ladies of Erasure Radio and Magazine. We are super excited in the month of February that our visitors, Dr. Tony Robinson, and our dear sister, Lady Alicia Curry, are still heading the From Ashes to Beauty, From Ashes to Beauty on Clubhouse. Yes, the ladies of Elation are coming to Clubhouse to share revelatory words of encouragement and strength. Women with real issues 
that are going to deal with women, whether they have broken lives or things that they're facing in the marketplace, whatever they are facing, the Women of Elation Radio and Magazine will be there. We will have our very own Dr. Kenny Robinson, Lady Alicia Curry, we have Lady Michelle, uh, who is going to be in our house, Lady Michelle Hurt. We have Apostle Sylvia, Dr. Uh, Sylvia Hunter, and we have Apostle Beauty Cooper that's going to be with us. And Dr. Loretta Petit will be in the house. Pastor Rhonda Bello will be with us. And your sister, Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. Listen, we encourage you to join the group from Ashes to Beauty on Clubhouse. We're looking forward as a team to ministering to you. And each woman will have a week. They will rotate, and we are going to be there for you. Please spread the word. Please share this word with those that you know are on Clubhouse, and let us come together to serve with one another and serve with love that we can encourage. And this is not just for women. Listen, I want you all to know, men sometimes talk on these lines, not just to be nosy, but listen, when the word is powerful, it's for all. So we don't want you to feel it's only for women. This is open to those that will hear and have an ear to hear all that is going on, okay? Would you do that for me? And would you pray all of us as we prepare for the month of February to live this opportunity with love? Because we know in the marketplace and on various things, one thing about elation. We believe in soul winning, healing, and we believe in deliverance. And I know each of these women will bring the word in that manner. So I encourage you because when you're before the people, there will be warfare that comes against you. But here's the thing. That's a sure sign that God is with you. Would you cover all of these women? as we are promoting and praying and doing the things we need to do, would you pray for us that God will get the glory as we agree that he will? So we'd love for you to be on board. Again, that is from ashes to beauty, and we're so grateful to serve you. Now, if you have physical needs that you need, various referrals, food, rental assistance, all of these things, please contact United Way at 211 in the St. Louis area. If you're in a different area, please look them up for what your numbers will be. You can also contact the Urban League, that's U-L-S-T-L, and they will be able to assist you with those same needs. Different programming is available. Please, by all means, when there are organizations set up to serve in your city and your community, please make sure you can contact them that God can get the glory and that your needs may be met. Well, listen, this time has flown by quickly. We're so grateful to have been with you on today. We ask that you continually pray. As I said, please keep Regina King in your prayers. All of these also, yes, thank you, Lord. Devon Franklin and Megan Good, we've heard all these stories. But listen, healing is needed. Prayer is needed. Let's not be one to watch the news, YouTube, whatever your media source that you're looking at, and do not pray. Let's begin even the more to pray that we pray for our families, our pastors, our churches, our community, our neighbors. Let's begin to pray the more. These are the last days, and people, and we all need prayer. And I ask that you pray for our family as we are praying um, that God be glorified, okay? So if you are facing some challenges, we are praying. Let's pray now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we 
thank you for this day. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for hearing our hearts, uh, issues and ways and things that we need from you. We know that you love us. We know that you hear us. And we're crying out for those that are not saved. God, would you save on today? Would you heal? Would you just touch today? There might be someone listening in who needs a touch from you. We ask that you touch right now. Lord, we pray for every house that will be provided. We pray, oh God, for every need to be met, for every heart to be aligned with you, that if there was anything they didn't understand, that they now understand through your word that you can be glorified. We pray, oh God, not only for every listener listening in, but for those that will hear the replay. Would you touch them as well, oh God? Would you touch marriages, families? Would you touch pastors all over the world? Would you touch ministries that our souls are prone to win souls for you to build the kingdom and follow your instructions for each of our lives and ministries? Lord, would you pray? Oh, God, we pray for believers to stand strong and to stand firm in this hour. When the enemy comes in like a Russian mighty man, that we put that, God, you will raise the standard up against him. We say thank you, God. I pray, oh, God, for that one that's in the hospital home, on the streets, wherever they may be, enduring hardship and affliction. Would you be with them, lead them, guide them, direct them, God? Lord, would you extend the hands, the feet of you in those cases where you want to send them, how you want to send them, that you may be glorified. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that those that have to say goodbye, that you will strengthen families, that they will understand and look to the hills from which cometh their help, recognizing all our help cometh from you, the Lord thy God, which is made to heaven and the earth. Father, would you continue to be with us all that are serving in the capacity of going and doing your will, all of us all of your people, all over the land, that you will lead God direct and cover them in your room. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, from ashes to beauty, we ask that you bless this group, that you will keep your hands upon us, O oh God. Give us the words to say and what you want us to do, how you want us to do it, that you may be glorified and lifted up, and that souls will be one and lives will be changed. And people will be encouraged. And we thank you in advance. In the month of February, God, we say thank you for the opportunity to serve. Now, Lord, we ask. There are unspoken requests that might be on the hearts of those listening to you. Would you take care of that, too? Would you help us as your people and those that don't even know you to make an informed decision to serve you? And those that know you, we are praying, O oh God, that you hear and answer and bless and help wherever help is needed. And, Father, not only unspoken requests, that you bless this podcast, bless our visionary and CEO, Dr. Kimmy Robinson, for all she does for all of us and all that she's doing in her life, in her community, whatever she's attached to. We're asking that you bless her and our CEO. My God, would you bless Elder Richard? We thank you, God, for them. And we're asking you to show yourself mighty and strong. And then lastly, I ask, oh God, that you bless my home, bless my husband, bless our health, bless what you're calling us to do, that you may be glorified and that you may be lifted up. And God, if there's anything I forgot, would you take care of that too? We thank you. We praise you for today's word in Joshua 24. May we apply it to our lives that you can be glorified and lifted up. Now, Lord, forgive us all of our sins, and we forgive others that we may be forgiven. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for listening to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. For us, woo, we're excited for what God is doing and what he's about to do. Would you please, if you'd like to get in contact with me and send me your community announcements, you can send them to me via Facebook under Michelle, E-L-E, 
right W-R-I-G-N-T. I will get them and I will read them on your behalf. Also, if you would also like to contact me for a prayer request and want us to stand in faith with you, you can reach me on Facebook. You can also reach me on LinkedIn under the same name, or you can reach me via IG, which is Instagram, under His Blessed Girl 7, the number 7 behind it. That's His Blessed Girl 7. I thank you again for listening in to the Just For You podcast. It's a pleasure to serve you, and may God bless you in your life and take care of you and cause His face to shine upon you. Until next time, you can meet us here again, if the Lord says the same, every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May God bless you. This has been Pastor Michelle Y. Wright with the Just For You podcast on Elation Radio. God bless you. Until next time. Hallelujah. That's what I was created for. 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 That's what I. Just to live in a house of magic, not just to try in a fine place to I just want more than a tangible, the world. For made by the master's hand, I'm a unique design, not just to work. Every day for a dollar Not to dress for the approval of man I am the image of the Father and the Savior For with Him I stand and with Him I will remain Yeah.